Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James, and here we explore the world of fountain pens, ink, and paper. And today it is about fountain pens, and there is going to be just a little bit of talk about the ink that came with these pens, because I, I found that to be kind of a nice surprise. So a few weeks ago, I shared with you my impressions of a pen very similar to this one, a Scrivener pen that I received as a gift years ago for my birthday, and I like that pen. They come with a Schmidt nib and a Schmidt converter and a really nice enameled finish, and it has been a really terrific pen. Well, after that review, I was contacted by Scrivener, and they asked if I would like to review a couple of their pens that is a newer model. And I say pens because these are two different materials, and the two materials really give a different impression of the pen um, in terms of what was sent to me. So I have for you today the Scrivener EDC. This is the chrome version. I also have here what seems to be an aluminum version of the pen and a matte finish. It is a shorter pen, which means it fits in more places, more pockets, more bags, more backpacks, and all that kind of stuff. Very handy. It still comes with that excellent Schmidt number five nib, and we'll take a look at that and see if this writes as well as the last one. And um, it, it's an interesting pen. So today we're looking at the Scrivener EDC, and then they also sent this British Racing Green version of the pen that I reviewed before, and I'm going to show that to you because this green is really just kind of a fetching color, and there's a little bit of a detail there that's also a little bit different. So we'll look at it as we go through the design and build and performance of these fountain pens. So let's spin that camera and dive right in. All right, so when your pen arrives, it comes in this nice presentation box, very nice and simple, padded here underneath the pen. The pen's arrived in very good shape, and here is that pen. Now, before we get to that pen, you also do have inside warranty information, instructions on the pen, and let's put that right side up for a second, the ink. That comes with a couple of cartridges, but that pen is, for the moment, the star of the show. So let's look it over. First, that chrome finish is really quite nice, and I do like it. I've been using this pen for well over a week now and have really enjoyed carrying it, using it, writing with it. It's been good. The logo is at the top. I think that looks good as well. And then you have this clip. Functions well. It's nice and springy. It's one of those ball end clips, and I find that it goes over uh, shirt pockets and things like that just fine. Come down to the center of the pen, you find that logo again, and Scriviner on the back. It does not have the model name, but that model is the EDC. You come on down and you find threads because this pen does post by threading. And of course, that makes it a very secure posting pen. The end is just a nice polished end that's beveled there, and I think that looks good. When you get ready to write, you would take off this cap, and that would be one and three quarters. We'll call that one and three quarter turns, and then probably about the same to go on for uh, posting. And again, very, very secure. No rattle. This pen does not have rattles. Quite nice. And now that the pen's uncapped, we have that grip section. So metal pens, and especially chromed pens, a lot of people don't like because it can be a little bit slippery when you come down to the grip and you're writing. Their solution has been to engrave that metal grip section so that you do find more grip. And I find that works really well. It is not a slippery metal grip, and uh, I like it. So to me, that gets a thumbs up. The nib in this pen is a medium Schmidt number five, and it is well tuned and well ground, and it's a nice smooth nib, as you'll see in the writing test here in just a second. I'm just going to tell you ahead of time, I really like the nib on this pen, and then of course the standard plastic feed. Taking this off, you will see that it takes an international short cartridge. It does come with a Schmidt converter. I just happen to use the cartridge in this pen. Speaking of converters, I can show you the converter in the matte version of the pen. Now this is a good bit lighter than that chromed one. So if you don't want the heavy, hefty pen, then you want something that is light and handy, this would be the version that you would get. And take a look at the matte finish on this pen. Pretty much everything else is the same, except that it is darkened in 
on the logo that is on the finial. Uh, but exterior wise, that's the main difference is this matte finish because this is an aluminum pen. Much, much lighter. I think the blue looks really good in this matte finish, as does the red. A friend of mine, who is also a viewer of this channel, has one of these pens already, and he has the red version, and he brought it the other day to show it to me, and just a great looking finish on the red one as well. But I really do uh, like, I like this matte finish a lot. And again, of course, it screws right on for posting in the same way. Now, you do not have the grooves on the matte version. I think they figure that that matte finish is enough to give you the grip that you need. And uh, this pen too feels really good in hand. It's so light. Uh, if you're, again, if you like a light pen, then you're really gonna want the matte finished pen rather than that chrome version. That would be for people who want a little more heft for sure. Then of course you open this up in the same way and it's metal grooves on metal grooves. And you find that Schmidt converter that is Scribner branded and uh, those always work really well. So I think both of these pens are really good looking pens and it does give you options. It's the same format but you get one that is heavy and hefty if that's what you want or that really great looking I think grooved grip. I think that is really nice and it does work really well or you've got this really great looking matte finish and then there are some other options as well. I'll throw up a picture just so that you see those. And then as promised, I wanted to show you this British Racing Green. I hope the lighting here can uh, work so that you can see just how good this is. That is a nice looking green. Now I won't re-review this pen because the main difference is this green enameled finish and, and the logo up here at the finial, which is a faux mother of pearl, a little insert there with that chromed S. I think that looks really good and it makes this a little bit different from the black and gold pen. So if you were getting one of these, you would want to make sure that you picked the one that you like. Otherwise, this is pretty much the same. Now this comes in the silver trim. You'll recall that my black and gold one, the gold plating was coming off of my nib after a couple of years use. Well, this would negate that issue altogether. And I think I really like the look of that silver trim. And I know I like the British racing green. All right, for size comparisons today, we have the Lamy All-Star, the Jinhao 992, and of course the Scrivener EDC, and then, because this surface is a little bit slanted, I can't just set this down, then we have the new Gravitas Quark, which of course is much smaller than that Scrivener pen. Now the 992 is not a huge pen, so that kind of gives you I think a good pen to compare that to, and of course that Lamy, if we bring that in closer, and that gives you an idea, very handy size when it is capped. And then posted, you can see that it is about the same as that Jin Hao 992, a little bit longer than the Quark when it's posted, and of course a lot shorter than that Lamy, but the Lamy is a long pen when it's posted. And then having to use these caps as roll stops today, you have the Lamy, which of course is still the longest, and then that 992, and the Scrivener really coming in very close in length, unposted as well. And then a Quark, that's just a whole different story, unposted. But again, if you know the dimensions of a 992, you've basically got the length of this both posted and unposted. All right, let's try this again. I did the entire writing test, found out my camera had only been recording the first mm, half a second. Let's try it again. So this is the Scrivener. That should be an E and that should be an I. EDC. And this one is a medium and it is a Schmidt nib. I just want to remind you of that. Really nice, smooth, medium nib, and I do like it. Ink today is the included blue cartridge. Now, for some of you, I know that's almost sacrilegious to use a cartridge or just to use the standard ink that comes in a pen. Some people, they just toss that in the box, in the closet, and never ever try it again. However, I have a practice of when I get a new pen 
often the first thing that I will ink it with is the ink that was supplied with it. And I do that for a couple of reasons. One is I just want to see what they're throwing in the box. Is it any good? Is it just generic? Does it have any life to it? And what I find is, honestly, even from some really more familiar and bigger named pen companies, you know, often it's just kind of a, it's there. It's a standard business, happy, business-friendly ink and nothing really to write home about. Uh, but every now and then you come across one that's really good. I've gotten some Chinese pens, for example, that came with completely unbranded black ink. My favorite black inks have been in free cartridges with pens from like Keiko or companies like that. Kind of funny. But you also find sometimes like this one, a really nice ink. So what about this ink? It is an included cartridge. They do also sell them places like Amazon and on their website and things like that. Uh, it's made in the UK. I don't know by whom, if that's like an actual in-house thing that they own or if they've contracted that out to somebody like Manuscript or Diamine. I have no idea. However, I can tell you this. This ink has some real dynamics to it. It's nice and vibrant. If my improvised lighting will play along today, it also has some nice variation. And throughout the variation, it's really nicely saturated. I found it's also a well-behaved ink. And that probably has some of you thinking you know who might have manufactured this ink. I have no idea, but I like it. It's really quite nice. And I think that's great. Now, how about a speed test while we're at it? And I have done this just a few minutes ago on that video that didn't work, so I kind of know what I'm going to get out of this, but I want you to see how this holds up or doesn't hold up. All right, so there you go. The only place that it skipped, and I, I think that was probably a bit of a roll as I move too quickly across the page. Uh, let's just try this again with a, a quick line. Yeah, I think the pen would have held if I had held. That looks great. So the pen performs really well, provides some nice variation of color with the included cartridge. You're not really going to get much in the way of line variation from this, although it's not as nail hard as some other uh, number five nibs. So here is zero pressure. And again, this is a medium. This is pressure and there is a line difference. So medium pressure. And then that's probably as much as I would give it right there. So not bad at all. So you could, there's, there's a little bit of springiness there. You could get just a little bit. Maybe you'd be more noticeable with a fine nib or something like that. But there you go. That actually does do quite nicely. Now I did notice one thing as I went back to the box and that is that the included cartridges in this pen are actually the Schneider blue cartridges from Germany. So the UK ink cartridge that I'm talking about must have been from the included boxes that they included in the package with these pens. But what's actually in this box is Schneider, but the Scrivener branded refill box is the blue that performs so nicely in this chrome pen. I just want to be clear about that. And then I want to say about this blue pen again, really nice. And if you prefer the lighter pen, this is the one to go to. If you want a heftier pen, this is the one to go to. But I don't think you can go wrong either way. This is going to be a nicer carry, I think, in a shirt pocket most of the time. Because, you know, a heavy pen in a shirt pocket, uh, depending on the shirt or the material, is not always great. But yeah, this is, is really well done, and I would recommend the pen. Are there any downsides? Was there anything I just didn't like about the pen? 
Uh, no, I've carried the Chrome one enough, and so I'm going to keep you know positives and negatives to the Chrome because that's the pen that I've actually carried for the last week and a half. And I can tell you, uh, that pen, it yeah, I've really enjoyed it. I, I've enjoyed it more than I thought I would. So for some, it's going to be a downside that ha has a metal section. Again, that mat is not going to be slippery. I think that's just fine. Lots of other pins are like that. Uh, but I think that the the cross hatching they do in the engraving, I think it takes care of the problem at least for me. And uh, we've had hot weather. If it was going to be slippery, you know, uh, hot Texas summer weather, that's going to be a problem. And, and it just hasn't been. I've really enjoyed using the pen. And uh, honestly, it's been a surprising revelation in all of these pens, including the regular pen. Uh, I, th I think they're putting out a good product, and I really do like it. Again, downside, uh, for some people, they're going to think that it might be just a little bit high, and that might be a thing. Weight on the chrome, that's a fingerprint magnet. But, you know, other than that, I, I'm not having any issues so far with the pens. Really enjoying them and hearing from other pen owners who've also taken a chance on these pens, and they're saying that they're having a good experience too. So uh, that's always good. Always love to welcome to the fold another good pen that I can re recommend to people and that it's easy to get your hands on, which is always nice too. So there you go. That's my review. What do you think? If you've got one of the EDCs especially, that's the pen we're looking at the most today, what do you think about it? What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? What's been your experience? Be sure and like, share, and subscribe, and join us again on the next pen review. God bless you, and have a great week.